Now, the general pattern in OCHEM, as you know, is every time you learn a new functional group, you have to learn two things, synthesis and reactions. You have to learn how to synthesize it and what you can do with it. But well, we just learned how to synthesize enamines. We can make enamines with this category four attack on an aldehyde or a ketone. Now we have to learn what are these good for? What can you do with an enamine? Well, we have to decide whether this is going to be a nucleophile or a electrophile. And in particular, I'm just gonna tell you that this carbon here, this former alpha carbon, I don't know what to call this now, but this is the former alpha carbon, this will be nucleophilic. So let's see if we can come up for, with some explanation for why this carbon would be nucleophilic. Now, we've always kind of expected carbon-carbon pi bonds to be somewhat nucleophilic, even uh, when we were just looking at alkenes. We saw we could do electrophilic additions. But um, this particular carbon is more nucleophilic than normal in an alkene. So can we come up with any explanation for why this would be more nucleophilic than normal than in a normal alkene? Um, well, um, by uh, induction, but then you also could, uh, you could make uh, resonance with the lone pair from the nitrogen to come down and uh, support the carbonyl carbon once that bond, mm -hmm. so the pi bond is... Uh, okay, that resonance good. argument sounds good. So let's try drawing that resonance structure. Let's try using electron pushing arrows to come up to draw that resonance structure you were thinking of that would show why that particular atom is nucleophilic. Do I want to show it like atta uh, attacking something or? Well, we want to start with this picture and use electron pushing arrows to, to come up with a new resonance structure. Or you, you can draw a new picture, but anyway, the point is we want to uh, Here's one picture of the enamine, and we want to use electron pushing arrows to show how we can come up with another resonance structure. There won't be reaction arrows, there'll just be resonance electron pushing arrows. So we need, yeah, so we need to put some electron pushing arrows in that picture that show how we can come up with a new resonance structure. That's a good start. I'm not quite sure where I put the. Take a guess. That's the right guess. Okay, that's right. Now let's see if we can draw the resonance structure that we'll get from those arrows. What is the resonance structure that comes from those arrows? In, uh, I'm sorry, by notation, what, how do you uh, notate not, not a reaction but a resonance? Yeah, that's a good point. Remember that resonance is indicated by double headed arrows. Now, if we take our time, since your arrows are right, we should be able to draw the new structure. We just have to make the changes that the arrows are telling us to make. That's right. We came up with that. And the most important thing is that you got the charges right. That's good. That's what a lot of people would forget. So here we're taking the lone pair and making it into a pi bond. Now you saw that this would have exceeded an octet on this carbon unless we moved these electrons out of the way. So this arrow wasn't optional. We had to move these out of the way of these. And the, really the only place we can put them is onto this carbon. There's no room for them over here. That would exceed an octet. So the only place you could possibly put these electrons is where you did put them on this carbon. So now there's going to be a new lone pair on this carbon. Now usually in OCHEM we don't draw lone pairs. However, we do have to take into account the charges, and that's something you did correctly. This is neutral, and it's losing electrons, so it ended up with a positive charge. And this is neutral, and it's gaining electrons, so it ends up with a negative charge from that new lone pair that we're not going to draw. So the charges are what are most important. Well, does this, does this strengthen or go against the idea that this carbon would be nucleophilic? Strengthens. That's right. So that's the explanation I was going for. You okay. came up with that. We have to come up with a reason why this has more electrons than it needs, whether we have this resonance structure. I might have mentioned to you that that's the theme of this whole term, resonance. What we have to get into the habit of doing is looking for resonance as an explanation for almost every topic in the term. Incidentally, you also mentioned induction, but that would have gone against this. That's because by induction, the nitrogen is pulling electrons away from this carbon. 
However, usually resonance is more important than induction. So the resonance argument here beats the induction, and this really is nucleophilic, although it's actually only moderately nucleophilic. Uh, and that's okay. Sometimes we want only a moderate nucleophile. So an A, an enamine is a good moderate nucleophile. That's a good note to make. An enamine is a good moderate nucleophile. It's only moderate because there's only a negative charge on this carbon in one of the pictures, and there's also that induction effect that goes away from it. We use this particular enamine, but we could have made the same argument for any enamine. Any enamine has this resonance structure where there's a positive on the nitrogen and a negative charge on this carbon. By the way, this also shows that this nitrogen is not nucleophilic. Normally, we would think of this nitrogen as nucleophilic because it has a lone pair, but it, now it also has a resonance structure with a positive charge. Well, that, that really damps down its nucleophilicity. That shows how important it is to draw the resonance structures. If you didn't know about resonance, you would have thought this was the nucleophile, but really it's this carbon here. So when we see enamines, we got to focus on this carbon as the nucleophile, not this one. That would be an easy mistake to make. It's this one over here, not the carbon connected to the nitrogen, but the one that's uh, next to that. Okay. So we're going to learn about reactions that we can do with this carbon nucleophile. Okay. We're always interested when we can find carbon nucleophiles, because that allows us to make new carbon-carbon bonds. That was the whole point of grid yards, for example. Incidentally, in a way, you, yeah, remember that you can draw either resonance structure of a molecule and it could be correct, but usually people draw this resonance structure of enamines because they don't have the charges. In some ways, the other resonance structure is more useful because it shows why this carbon is nucleophilic, but people don't usually draw it that way, so I'm not going to draw it that way either. I'll draw the, nu the neutral form. Let's see if we can come up with a reasonable reaction between these two sets of reagents. Based on what we were just talking about, we, we should be able to come up with something that's reasonable here. So let's look at this for a second. Can you think of any reasonable reaction that could happen between these sets of reagents? Based on the ideas that we were just talking about. The um, nucleophilic carbon of the enemy could attack the carbon uh, attached to the halogen. Great. Very good. Let's show electron pushing arrows for that. Excellent. What was this little notation? This is the delta positive. Ah, right. So good. And what's this notation? This is it. Those are good arrows. However, remember, Oops, we decided to use this bond. resonance structure so where there is no negative charge. So the tail should be on the bond. That's right. All right. Those are little technicalities, but we might as well get that right. So we basically came up with the right arrows. Where is this? So who's going to be the nucleophile? This carbon here. But where is it going to get the electrons from? from the pi. Well, and this resonance structure doesn't have a lone pair. It's going to take them from the pi bond. And then it's going to attack this carbon. But it's good that you saw that this is reasonable because this has a delta positive. We already know why this is reasonable. We know that this is a nucleophile because of the resonance structure where it has a negative charge. And this is a reasonable electrophile because it has a delta positive. This pi bond isn't really going to play any role here. Now, incidentally, the conventional way to draw this is like this. Okay. This really reinforces why this carbon is nucleophilic. It's like the nitrogen is kicking the electrons off. So that's probably the best way to write that. That kind of conveys the idea of that other resonance structure as well. The nitrogen is eager to kick these electrons off. Well, now let's use these electron pushing arrows to draw the product. Now that we have the correct arrows, if we take our time, we should be able to get the right product. That was good. That was a good move to put in these numbers. You know, it's always helpful to put in numbers to make sure we're not adding or dropping carbons. 
Now you saw that there should be a new pi bond here. This pi bond should be gone because of this arrow. And now this carbon has formed a new bond to the number one carbon. The leaving group is gone. The number one is attached to the number two. And the number two has a pi bond to the number three. So it was a good idea to use numbers here. There's also a bromide leaving group. The best thing that you did is you realized that this nitrogen would have a positive charge for the same reason that the bromine has a negative charge. The bromine is at the, is at the final head. It started neutral and it's gaining electrons to become negative, while the nitrogen is at the initial tail. It started neutral and it's losing electrons. This is what a lot of people would forget about. We got to put in that positive charge. And there's really nothing the nitrogen can do about this because it doesn't have any protons. So it's really stuck with this positive charge for a second. The conventional way to write this now would be to show the two counter ions close to each other. If you can't get rid of a charge, it's conventional to show the two ions kind of balancing each other out. That's a minor technicality. 